What's up, guys? Thank you for tuning in to the Uncommon Mindset Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. Today, I'm joined by Mike Bond. I'll just give you a little introduction on who Mike is. Mike is one of the top MMA journalists in the world, working for MMA Junkie. He's one of my favorites to watch when it comes to interviewing other fighters. If you enjoy mixed martial arts, you'll know who this guy is. And it's such an honor to be joined by you today, Mike. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate you inviting me on. It means a lot. No, of course. Um, I think a great place to start, Mike, because um, I'm very intrigued in this as well, is how you actually got involved in mixed martial arts journalism. Uh, so if you can just walk me through that and the listeners as well, that'll be amazing. Yeah, I think uh, like most people in this industry kind of just started out as a fan of the sport, you know, was watching in high school and things like that. And um, once I was kind of, you know, moving on, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and going to university uh, early on, I was just taking a lot of, you know, general type studies, nothing, you know, super specific. I didn't know what I wanted my degree in. And kind of while that was going on, my first, second year, I started to get gravitated towards some writing classes. And then in between my first and second year um, with some buddies, we were, you know, big MMA fans. So we were like, hey, let's start like a little blog where we just post our predictions and things like that. So really, we would do that. And I was the one who was maintaining it. Like they would send me their stuff to edit and I would put all the posts together with the images and just all that stuff. So um, I kind of was like, hey, I really like this a lot. Maybe let's try to make like a actual website where maybe I could write some columns and see if I could get some interviews and things like that. Um, so started doing that a few months later. And as I went into my second year of university, I was like, hey, let's try to take some creative writing courses. Uh, the school I was at did not offer a journalism major. It was only a minor. Mm -hmm. So I was taking that and I was really enjoying those classes um, but I wasn't so much enjoying like the creative writing element, which was technically my major. So like, you know, poetry and you know fiction and stuff like that. It just wasn't, you know, my big interest in terms of writing. So um, I wanted to switch schools and go somewhere where I could get a full time, you know, uh, major in journalism. And while I was doing that, I was juggling the website on the side and was able to like use that even for some like school related projects and stuff. So it all tied together really well. And obviously, you know, I'm taking journalism classes, getting knowledge on how to you know, participate in this industry and, you know, the rights and wrongs and those kind of things. Um, and really, it just kind of took off from there. Um, as I was maintaining my blog, I had sent some links to the then editor of MMA Junkie, Dan Stop. And uh, he said, you know, I, I think you are doing some great work. Um, just kind of keep it up. We don't really have any openings right now, but if we do, I'll keep you in mind. And uh, pretty much a whole, about a, another year and a half went by and I was continuing to do my thing with school and all that. And I uh, just woke up one day actually had, and had an email from Dan and he's like, hey, kind of the time has come. Uh, we have an opportunity on staff and you're someone that I've been, you know, keeping my eye on. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And he had offered me a job and, uh, you know, it took off from there. It'll be uh, nine years with MMA Junkie in USA Today on August 1st. So we're coming up close to that anniversary. Wow. That's incredible. I, I love the, I love how you just stuck at it. Like even after he said that, you know, there's no openings just because you loved it. You just stuck at it. That's amazing. Um, uh, you know, you mentioned that um, you obviously enjoyed watching mixed martial arts uh, yourself. Do you ever like do mix martial arts or have you always just been like a fan of watching it yeah i've done some training um here and there i actually lived about five six years ago i lived in new york for a summer and i went and trained at henzo gracie's because his gym was like right a few blocks from the office i was working at um so yeah i've done like a bit of training i've done i was getting right back into it before covid hit and everything shut down here in toronto and since i've been back you know really i don't want to say we're out of covid but since you know the world started to open up and there's been opportunities to travel for work and stuff more um i've been wanting to go back but just kind of on the road so much and those jiu-jitsu gyms could be expensive and stuff man so it's like i'm trying to just figure out how to strike a balance of being able to go in and maybe start some training again but maybe not you know eat a hole in my wallet to just go like once or twice a month because you're traveling so it's a tricky balance but definitely something that's on my mind to get back into and there has been some training you know years ago at this point 
Yeah, no, amazing. And um, you obviously mentioned that, um, and you mentioned previously as well, that, you know, you started off by just messaging fighters, right? Just messaging mm-hmm. people. Um, what was that whole process like? And did you get many responses from doing that? Yeah, I did. Um, and I mean, this is what at this point, like 2011, so almost 10 years ago at this point, or a little more than 10 years ago, um, social media wasn't what it was at this point. You know, I'd say people are just as accessible, but someone, you know, DMing you on Twitter or whatever, being like, hey, is there any way uh, you'd be willing to do an interview or could you connect me to your manager to do it? Um, the likelihood of getting a response back then was, you know, a lot stronger than maybe it would be now where, um, it's just madness. People don't have their DMs open even really, um, or you could just tweet them. But yeah, I would try to send maybe like 10 a day to fighters, managers, blah, blah, blah. And if I just got like one response, whether it was on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, um, I would be happy and I'd take whoever I could get. And, you know, the first personality MMA related who talked to me was John Anik. And then I got Benson Henderson, you know, right before he rematched Frankie Edgar for the title in Japan. So, um, yeah, I mean, any, like, I would just throw out a wide net and whatever kind of fish came back in, I'd be very pleased with. So that's kind of the way you had to do it. You know, if you can get, if you get nine no's and one, yes, that's still a success for me. Yeah. It's like, if you keep knocking on the door, eventually one door will open, right? So exactly. yeah, it's, it's like what, what what I'm doing as well. I think people will be surprised on on um, the responses you will get from these high level athletes because uh, some people think that's impossible to get in contact with them. But if you just no. send them a message, you never know, right? They might reply. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite parts about this industry. Like the athletes are so accessible, and you know, once you do get to talk to them, I mean, we know this. They're very open and honest. It's not like talking to NBA or NFL players who are media trained and they go through this whole process and know how to, you know, the do's and don'ts. And that can be obviously for better, for worse. I'm sure some of these MMA athletes say things they probably shouldn't, but that's the the great thing of the sport and this personality. Yeah. That's why I love the UFC, especially like Dana, like he just doesn't care. Does he? (laughs) Exactly. He's kind of, you know, he's the figurehead of that. It kind of trickles all down from him. If he's as open as he is uh, in most situations, the fighters kind of fall suit. Yeah, no, of course. Um, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, do you ever like do you ever get nervous before talking to these athletes? Because obviously you said like you know you enjoy MMA and talking to John Anik, you know, one of the yeah. biggest people in mixed martial arts at the moment. Like, what was that like talking to him? Like, were you nervous or oh, were you dude, like ready so to- nervous? I'll never forget the uh the Benson Henderson one in particular because it was my first like big name fighter, and it was obviously he was about to fight or defend his UFC title and um, it was just craziness and I was yeah sweating I just remember like madness and this is obviously uh, years ago so it was like audio only through the phone we weren't on like a zoom or whatever talking like we are now um, so you could hide you know some of that behind you know not being on video but yeah man like would get nervous very very often early on especially those very early days but soon enough you get very comfortable with it i mean you're in the sport long enough it's my every day so like i feel very comfortable yes maybe there is certain gaps of knowledge as far as like you know being in the cage i've never experienced that myself but i think i've been around the sport the business uh the people talk to enough fighters that i'm pretty comfortable uh interviewing almost anyone obviously there's certain scenarios where it feels very big say like you know ahead of a huge fight you get an exclusive interview with someone but you're nervous because you just want to do a good job not nervous that you're gonna you know screw up and say something terrible or something like that right yeah no of course um I, what what are the like what would you say are the most like the the benefits of of being you know an mma journalist or even a journalist in itself what would you say Man, I mean, I obviously you get to be very close to the sport. I mean, I this is the as I said, the sport I love. I was following it um, very closely before I ever even knew that I wanted to do this as a profession. And I would read the MMA junkies and the MMA fightings and all these sites, watch Ariel's interviews and all these things before I never like even knew I wanted to do this as a job. So, um, 
you know, a lot of times I'd say the biggest benefit is I know it's very cliche, like find something that you love as work and you don't feel like you ever work a day in your life. And that's kind of what it is, right? Like, obviously that's not true hundred percent of the times so there's things that do you feel like a grind that you don't want to do here and there that are just part of the job. But for the most part, I mean, yeah, that's kind of how I feel towards this work. It doesn't really feel like, you know, I'm laboring and having to do that. And I think that's what anyone probably is looking for in life in terms of a job. Yeah. And I, I know that obviously you get to travel a lot as well, right? You were out in Singapore, uh, you know, you go to Vegas and all these places. What's been your favorite place to go to? Man, there is some recency bias. Like obviously Singapore, that was very recent, but that was one of my favorite trips. Um, Japan back in 2015 was a lot of fun. Um, the first time I got to go to Brazil for a big pay-per-view was in 2016. Um, I believe that was Ronda Rousey and Betch Cahaya. So like the last time Ronda Rousey won a UFC fight, um, got to be there. That was my first time in Brazil. So um, yeah, some some cool spots. Sweden years ago for the uh, Gustafsson Anthony Johnson fight was cool. Um, it was interesting because it was dark, like 23 hours or like 21 hours of the day. It was very bizarre. Um, so yeah, like some places like that. And then obviously you get to go to kind of bigger cities like Vegas and New York and stuff like that. But in terms of the ones that maybe are like one-time deals or kind of stand out, some of those ones are my favorites. Yeah. Um, is there a fighter that that stands out that, you know, that's one of your favorites to do an interview with or are they all as equal, would you say? Um, I mean, there's definitely ones that are more difficult to interview than others um, that'll, you know, not give you much. And some you can just like say, hey, talk, and they'll give you a phenomenal interview, you know, like a Chael Sonnen or like a Colby Covington or obviously like a Conor McGregor or something. But, um, you know, some of the ones that stand out to me when people kind of ask that question are like Max Holloway and Dustin Poirier, just because I go back so far with them. You know, I was talking to those guys, their second, third UFC fights and, uh, you know, kind of built those relationships very early on. On. So um, even though I would not call those two like the most magnetic interviews in the world, you know, especially these days, Max Holloway, almost every interview he gives is very similar because he has his lines that he goes to. And, um, you know, it is what it is in his words. So uh, he's one, but just still given the history, I really enjoy talking to him and Dustin kind of the same as well, even though they may not give you these crazy, you know, one liners that are going to blow up on social media and stuff. I just enjoy uh, their company and speaking to them whenever there's an opportunity. Yeah, no, of course. Max Holloway is one of my favorite fighters as well. So that's that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, do you do you ever uh, find it difficult? Um, so like, you know, whenever I watch some people giving interviews at um, press conferences, um, you know, sometimes the, the fighters, they react in a certain way that you're like, whoa, like, you know, I didn't expect that at all. Is, has that happened to you before? I mean, it happened this past weekend with Alexander Volkanovsky, right? He kind of called me out at the press conference a little bit. And I think, um, you know, that one, I don't know exactly what bothered him. I think it was probably when he accused Max Holloway of faking the injury when he pulled out of the fight in Jacksonville. Um, we had put a story out and I think I like quote tweeted it being like, it's ridiculous to accuse Max Holloway of all people of faking an injury. This guy's you know, one of the, the Iron Men of the UFC. Um, and I'm sure that caught his radar. And it seemed like he was just like waiting for the opportunity to kind of uh, bring that back up because you could see his reaction right when I got the mic and started to ask the question. He's like, ooh, you know, he had that one in his back pocket. So it kind of just depends on the person. That did catch me off the guard, but it wasn't, I didn't feel like he was attacking me or anything. It was more just like, I think a moment of saying like, I pay attention to all the stuff you guys in the media are saying or this, that, and the other thing, even though if it was that, you know, that particular moment, he did end up walking that comment back. So I don't know why he would hold anything against me, but um, for the most part, yeah, like that was slightly unexpected, but nothing that like, you know, worried me or anything like that. I think uh, for the most part, I conduct myself in a professional enough manner that there's, you know, I'm not going to be getting slapped by Nate Diaz or anything as we saw with the uh, full send guy recently. <laughs> that was hilarious. Right. Yeah. I, do, I, I don't know if that was real or not, but it looked kind of real. I'm told, I'm told it's real. Yeah. I'm told uh, that that reporter who I don't know personally, um, I'm sure he's pretty new. I think he's pretty new to the space with those, you know, full send guys. And I think he had said or written or tweeted something that uh, 
again, Nate remembers a lot of these guys. As you know, Izzy kind of said at the end of his press conference, I thought that little spiel he went on was um, a bit, you know, I don't want to say out of line, but maybe not uh, as thoughtful as it could have been. But I think the one thing he does say is like, be careful what you say and you write and all that. Of course, as media, as people who follow the sport, we're allowed to have opinions. I mean, that's part of the job. Um, but also do you know that if you're going to have an opinion and you're going to vocalize it or write it in a certain way, um, be prepared to back that up in certain situations, you know? So, um, hopefully you don't say something that's going to offend someone enough. They want to attack you, but, um, yeah, if you, you gotta be careful too, because these are people you're writing about and they have obviously feelings and emotions as well. Yeah. One person that's, uh, that sticks out is, uh, Tony Ferguson when he says, uh brother i'm talking <laughs> i love that when he does that yeah hold on brother i'm talking that was yeah. a great one um yeah but bringing it back to you now um what what have you set yourself any like long-term or short-term goals at all man it's uh i think one of the shorter terms ones is just trying to see what we can do in terms of coverage like getting as we're getting back to i would i guess we want to call it normalcy at least with the ufc travel schedule i mean it was so unique pre-covid you know they're in a different city in a different state country etc every single week and it's kind of we call it the traveling circus more or less because it's all just the, the same staff and media and stuff like that going to all these places and uh, covid was obviously a challenge you know you had to come up with different ways to manufacture factor comment or content but i think we all knew there was going to be an other side to it and you're just wondering what it's going to look like and i think as we start to see that uh, with you know them going back on the road how they're setting up their fight weeks and things like that um, i think that's going to allow us to kind of see what the future is going to hold and kind of reset those goals so i think a lot of stuff kind of went on pause a little bit during covid and like terms of knowing what's realistic you basically in that scenario would just do whatever you could i mean what was available was some of these very low level fight cards that the ufc was rolling out you know very thin in terms of you know the actual depth of the cards um, but now we're seeing things get back to normal and i think that's going to allow us to um, know what kind of what we have in store in terms of possibilities with access and projects we can build and stuff like that but i'd say you know the short-term goal the long-term goals are always what they are every single week just pr produce the most high level of coverage we can try to you know produce unique content something that's different from the norm and try to make the most of um, the content we can get that's guaranteed coming out of these media days and stuff like that because it is very formulaic and it's uh, it can be challenging to try to keep things fresh and unique for the audience yeah no of course um so if there's one thing that you would say if someone's trying to get into journalism what would that one thing be would it be like start a website um not just i mean you could of course i think it's always good to have a platform start a website a youtube channel a social media account whatever you know you feel most comfortable or think you can connect the most with an audience but yeah i mean i think the big thing is obviously make stuff unique like because anyone can go write a recap of Rafael Dos Anjos versus Rafael Fazeev and what happened in the fight and who won like that's that's nothing unusual there's no reason that you know someone who's just coming up why they would seek out your recap over you know say like a MMA fighting or MMA junkie or ESPN or whatever right um so like what can you do to separate yourself from the space in terms of you know interview style or what you're trying to ask and get out of these ones i think you know what you're doing here with kind of when you message me about this podcast and what your intention is and what kind of spin on it like that's you know i get a lot of messages from people asking and i saw what you're doing i thought you know that's something interesting i'd love to chat and um, so like, I think that's kind of, you're on the right track in that sense, but I think for anyone who's listening, who's wanting to do that, you got to look at the space, assess what pocket of it you're most keen on getting into and what you can do different from the people who are occupying it. And I'd say for me, one of the things that really helped me is doing, you know, facts and stats research, which has kind of become my calling card in a lot of ways. Um, and that was something that at the time, you know, UFC didn't have its partnership with Fight Merrick or UFC Stats, as they call it now. And I was able to kind of put out things that wasn't really there. And um, that's something that allowed me to get some following based off that. And over time, you're producing interviews, you're breaking news, people respect your opinion and things like that. So um, once you can kind of open up a door, 
then the rest will open up and people will follow other elements of your work that you know maybe other people in the space are doing yeah yeah and one big thing that you touched on there is like is being consistent as well right you, absolutely consistency just beats everything just keep doing it keep doing it and then eventually you know it, it's like a snowball effect right so yeah, yeah. There's, there's no shortage of opportunities now i mean obviously when i was uh first starting ufc was doing what like 30 28 shows a year and there wasn't really as much as a bellator or a pfl there was some other things going on like strike force and you know at the very uh and pride but yeah like it's now it's there's no reason to say there's like a lack of stuff to write on. You got 22 to 30 UFC fighters competing every week and then all the other stuff that's going on with the other organizations. So um, there should be no shortage of opportunities to find content. It's just how do you make it captivating and unique, but um, there's stuff going on every single week. So consistency should be the least of the issues, right? Yeah, no, of course. Uh, just a couple more questions. Um, um, so I just wanted to ask, when you going through like a tough situation um it's kind of out you know like not nothing to do really with journalism but just in life in general like you know if you're going through like a tough situation or it could be even involved in journalism how do you overcome a situation like that would you say like do you take a step back do you go for a walk is there anything that you do that might help like uh, the audience uh, the listeners uh so that, like they can pick up on something new to do yeah, I mean, I think uh, teach their own. Obviously, everyone has their own um, outlets for that stuff. I mean, obviously, I enjoy going to the gym or like going in the steam room, things like that. Um, if you can, depend weather permitting, like bike rides, kind of. Uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges I think for me, especially as I, you know, uh, build like personal relationships with a girlfriend and we start thinking about the future, is like how am I going to find a balance between you know this work, which is basically 24 seven, you know, like there's uh, some, a big fight could break or someone could get injured at three in the morning on what's technically your day off. And like, you know, then you have to go write it up. So things that I can do to minimize the screen time from like staring at my computer and Instagram and my phone and things like that. Um, I think that's the biggest kind of key element to maintaining some level of mental health and avoiding burnout. Um, Cause it can be a grind, man. I mean, the amount of people, um, on the MMA reporting side that I've seen come and go over the years, there's been a lot of turnover. And of course, there's some big time players who've kind of you know stood pat and been around, but um, it can be, I do not blame anyone who would get burned out on this. So it's just keeping that kind of passion going and the freshness. And uh, that all starts with, you know, showing some love to yourself to an degree. And obviously each person has their vices and things that make sense, whether it's you know, drinks with friends or the gym or whatever that I said, um, there's, you just got to take a little bit of time because the one thing I've learned, you know, you want to, especially someone in my position that's doing it at kind of the higher level, you want to break every story. You want to get every big interview. You want to, uh, you know, write the best columns or give the best opinions or whatever but you can't do it every single one there's a ufc event every single week if you miss something this week there's going to be another fight card you know if you can't travel to this show because there's a, a friend's wedding or something this weekend like it's going to be okay there's going to be a thousand more events on the horizon so i think i'm kind of understanding that and that's obviously something that in my position i have more of a luxury of being able to do um five six seven years ago beyond that when I was first getting into that there's no way I'd do that because you know I don't want to give people on the come up any opportunity to maybe surpass me or feel like I'm being outworked by anyone but um again if you always hammer the deck like that you're gonna burn yourself out and you're gonna lose the passion so um even I'd say on the lower level I kind of wish in hindsight and maybe I'd taken some more of those moments to myself and I'd maybe be in like a not to say that I'm in a health, unhealthy spot right now, but maybe even even healthier ones. So um, it's hard to say. Sorry, I rambled a bit there, but I think there's no. a lot of layers to that question. No, of course, no. That's that's amazing, and I I love that you touched on that because it is important to have that balance as well, right? You can't just always you know be in the mindset of just work, work, work. Like you said, you can just burn yourself out so easy when when. But but I did like what you said at the start you know, the couple, the first couple of years, you had to grind, you had to put that time in, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much. Honestly, I really appreciate your time. I know that, you know, you're such a busy person, like you mentioned, you know, anything can just break. 
breaking news at the moment, you know. So, uh, but I do appreciate your time. And um, I just want to say that um, what I'll do is I'll leave a link down below for the listeners uh, if they want to go and check you out, if they want to go and check MMA Junkie out. I'm sure most of my listeners are mixed martial art fans. So um, they've definitely heard of yourself. Um, I was with friends earlier and I mentioned that I'm going to have, a, you know, Mike Bonn on and they were like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I listened to him. <laughs> so, yeah, no, thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate your time um is there anything that you'd want to say before i let you go um you know to the listeners if you could if you know nothing nothing crazy just as i kind of reiterate what i said earlier i think you know when you reached out i appreciated your message and the tone and you know the way you kind of approached it and you you know detailing what you're doing here so i think uh keep it up man and just uh you know keep pushing and things will work out for the best and uh, if you ever need anything from me let me know i think you said you'll attach the social media it's mike bond on twitter mike bond mma on instagram so if anyone wants to give me a follow we're always kind of posting stuff there and on the road and traveling around covering these events so uh hopefully can keep up the coverage for you guys and i appreciate anyone who reads and listens and supports in any way it means a lot yeah no thank you mike and um no i appreciate your time again thanks a lot no worries man have a great day i appreciate you